Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rio's How-To videos. Today, we're going to talk about how to fish for bonefish, or how to set up for bonefish, because it's pouring down with rain, and there's no better time than right now to show you how to set up the right outfit for your bonefish trip. We're going to start off with a rod. Most of the time, you're going to want a rod about an eight weight. That's your good all-round bonefish rod. That's like your nine foot five weight for trout, your eight weight bonefish rod will do everything. You might go down to lighter rods for, in countries that have smaller bonefish, but generally your eight weight's your perfect one. This is a Sage Salt HD, and that's what we'll be using out in the flats. On the bottom end of that rod, a reel is obviously very essential, and again, you want to make sure you've got an eight weight reel. Very important, you get the right size of reel. It'll hold your fly line, it'll hold your backing, it'll balance your rod. You also want to make sure there's a good drag on the reel because bonefish are pretty hard fighting. If you get them on the flats, they can run hard and firm. So you want to make sure you've got a good dialed in drag system uh, like this reel here. On the bottom of the reel, they're going to have some backing. And again, pretty important, the choice of backing. This is a gel spun backing. That's a type of backing material. It's much finer and much stronger than your regular backings. And it's a very, very good backing for any saltwater reels because it's super thin and super strong. This is 65 pound in strength. And why that's important when you're saltwater fishing is because you go to fish, if it runs and takes your backing out, you want the thin backing cutting through the water. It provides an awful lot less drag, so there's less pressure on the hook hold on the fish. But also you can get 200 yards of backing like this on that eight weight reel. So there's plenty of backing for when you hook that really big bone that goes out a long way. So gel spun backing is important. And then of course your fly line, obviously it's got to have a fly line on the front end. And we've got a couple of lines at reel that we recommend. This is the direct core bonefish line. And why this is a good line, it's got a fairly long head, around 47, 48 foot in length, which is a good head if you're up on the boat, you're making long distance shots and you're retargeting bonefish. Uh, and if you're a fairly decent caster, that's an excellent choice of line. If you're a beginner caster, or if you're wade fishing, you want something like the Bonefish Quick Shooter. Now that line has a much shorter head. So when you're low down in the water wading and you're not seeing the fish at long distance, you're seeing fish at 25, 30 feet, you want a line that's gonna load up at a closer range and that's what the bonefish quick shooter is. So that's a perfect line if you're fishing in the wading or if you're also a beginner at bone fishing. On the front of the line, obviously you put on a leader uh, and basically you want a bonefish leader, something like this. This is a 12 pound leader. You might go down to eight or 10 pounds in size if you wanna go down to smaller stuff. And if your bonefish leader is like this 12 pound and you want to go down to a slightly thinner material, then you can just go down to a, something like an 8 pound or a 10 pound saltwater material. Make sure you don't take your trout stuff out there. That's not stiff enough to turn over the saltwater flies or in typical saltwater winds. So 8, 10 pound, good idea to have a couple of spools of that. Take your 12 pound bonefish leaders. And just in case you get some really calm flats, maybe some shallow flats with super spooky bones, then try to take some fluorocarbon with you. So fluor is a little better material when you have those really spooky bones in, in calmer flats and shallower flats when the fish are really ultra spooky. So add on a couple of spools of fluorocarbon and then you're pretty well set for your basic terminal rig. Obviously you do want a selection of bonefish flies and I've just got a selection here and a selection here. These are just depending on where you go. Just do some research on where you're going. Find out if you want really lightweight ones like this for skinny flats like in Christmas Island or you want some slightly heavier ones for deeper flats. So find out where you're going. Kind of get some recommendations of the type of flies and particularly the fly weights. That's pretty important. The eye weights. And then, although that's your basic rig, there's a couple of terminal things I'd suggest you take along as well. Perhaps one of the most important things is your line cleaning towelette. That's an absolute essential thing if you're a saltwater angler because you're going to find your salt crystals will dry on your line, they'll dry on your rod guides, they won't shoot so well, your fly line loses its performance, and you think something's going wrong or your casting's going wrong, and all you need to do is wipe down your fly line with one of these towelettes, wipe off all the salt, put some silicon back on the line, and it'll shoot perfectly. So put a bunch of those in your pocket, take those with you, and then obviously you need some accessories, you need some good Polaroids, Polaroids because you're going to be spotting fish, so you need some good Polaroids. I like glass because I think they get much better optics than the polycarbonate lens. So just choose the color that you like out there on the flats or again, it's recommended by the lodge you're going to. You also need a set of tools. And on this necklace here, I've got some forceps. I always have these, this helps unhook a fish, uh, helps squeeze a barb off if you ever want to do that. You might want to. You certainly want to take a hook sharpener with you, a hook file like this to keep those hooks razor sharp. A lot of saltwater species have very hard mouths. So you need a really sharp hook. And then of course you need some nippers just on the front end there just to snipping off your leader or your tippet. Uh, and then I always carry a set of pliers 
Um, you never know. Sometimes you're going to cut wire. Pliers are good for a whole bunch of things. So that's a good outfit to have with you. It's a really simple outfit to have, but also when you go on your first bone fishing trip or you're once a year and you don't have the right gear, it's really important to know exactly what to take. And that's the purpose of this film. So hopefully you enjoyed this. As I said, this was a how-to, how to set yourself up for a good bonefish trip. If you enjoyed this, just tune into the Rio website and you'll see there's a whole section on how-to videos and check out the rest of them. Many thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this film.